Concord should absolutely 100% be used as a case study as to what not to do with a new IP for a video game. Because just recently, as of yesterday at the time we were recording this, on September the 4th, it was announced that on September 6th that Concord servers were going to be completely shut down and it was taken off of the Steam store as well as I think the PlayStation store. And I think the only way that you can get this game is through physical copies if they're still around over at like a GameStop somewhere. But yeah, Concord is one of the biggest failures that I've ever seen for a video game at all. The only game that I can think of that actually failed harder than Concord Concord is a game called Dustborn, I believe that's what it's called. And that game failed even worse because at the time when it launched, like recently, maybe like sometime in August, around the same time as Concord, I believe, the peak amount of players that it had was only 83 players. And even right now, it only has four active players currently playing it. The fella you're with, uh, a black kid, dresses like a writer. Does he know anything? You are racist. <laughs> From what I can tell, from what little that I've seen of the game, from Moist Critical or even like someone who did a sponsorship, which was uh, Vanos Gaming, even though I don't really remember anything that happened within his video, to be perfectly honest, the game just didn't really look all that fun. It looked slow and plunky and janky. It just, it didn't look fun to play in comparison to something like, like Overwatch 2, even though Overwatch 2 isn't really like that good of an example because I don't think that a lot of the stuff that they're doing with that game is very good. I think I would rather play that game than Concord and that says a lot because I've never even touched Overwatch 2. I played a little bit of Overwatch 1, but I didn't have, I haven't even touched Overwatch 2, and I would rather play that game than Concord. Especially considering the fact that the character designs, if you look at them, are just awful and terrible and just like I think there's maybe like one or two that I see that are kind of okay, that I think could work if implemented properly and, and if the game was good. But most of the character designs just aren't at all in interesting to look at because they just, <laughs> they just look so, they just don't look interesting to look at. Whereas if you look at Blizzard's game with Overwatch 2, the character designs stand out, they look unique, and the game is still diverse while still having very interesting looking character designs. Whereas you look at something like Concord and it looks like something that someone who's trying to push an agenda would make. And I think that's also just another one of the biggest criticisms about this game as well is that it focused more so on identity politics than anything else when they should have been focusing on trying to make the game as good as possible. Regardless of all that, the game comes out on the 23rd, something like that, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, I, I think on the 23rd of August, and it just doesn't succeed. It just bombs massively players are they're not playing the game anymore it peaked at not even 700 players 697 players and with only 37 current active players playing it right now it just underperformed massively like i think they got like 25,000 sales total which is like barely probably even like a million dollars which is not a whole lot you know considering the amount of money that they spent on it which i think it was around a hundred million to 200 million dollars to make this game over the course of eight years of development time which is horrible like absolutely fucking horrible so millions of dollars down the drain years of hard work down the drain for a game that just didn't succeed and players didn't want to play regardless of that though you have game journalists trying to protect this game and promote this game as hard as they fucking can by saying uh people shouldn't be brave dancing on unpopular games and that's a bad habit meanwhile they are completely doing the very exact same thing that they're criticizing for a different game entirely from an entirely different studio which was Redfall from last year. You have Sony asking their first party studios to like tweet about the game and get them to promote, to promote the game as much as possible. Again, like I had just mentioned before with sponsors, uh, they're trying to get like sponsorships to get content creators to start playing the game. You have even devs, like Concord devs, like interacting with other people on Twitter saying that pe the people who are quote unquote hating on this game are just talentless freaks. And so they don't even take the criticism to heart. You have people on Steam trying to say, oh, well, people's jobs are at stake, guys. We have to play this game because people's jobs are at stake you know like think about the employees who made this game because they totally deserve your 40 dollars to play this game when you can go play something like i don't know the first descendant which is like free to play which a little off topic but i was talking about the character designs and in, in concord i found this tweet about this character from the first descendant and uh honestly that's enough to make me at least a little bit curious about what this game is about i don't even know what this game is about I don't even know what a first descendant is, but I kind of want to play it 
just because of this video that I saw on Twitter. So yeah, just a good character design can sometimes help a little bit more than you think. If a, if a character has a good design, if they look like interesting to look at, and if they have gameplay that is interesting to watch, then that's gonna be enough for people to wanna at least try it out to some certain extent. I also found another tweet of another guy dogpiling on uh, Elden Ring because apparently it was like super buggy at launch, which I'm not gonna deny that that definitely was the case. It wasn't like the perfect launch, uh, but it's just so strange to see this guy criticizing IGN for giving this game a masterpiece score of a 10 out of 10. And then you see him make all these tweets about Concord saying that it's, oh, it's the best game that he's ever played. Oh, this is a, uh, this is like the most amazing PlayStation live service game that he's ever played and this and that. And, and oh, it's a banger and all this stuff. And just, it's just so hilarious to see him go from one thing to another. Which brings me to another thing that I saw uh, a lot of which was someone made a tweet regarding around the uh, the money that Sony could have spent on instead of Concord and it was another Killzone game or maybe like a like a Killzone remake a remaster or something like that an Infamous 4 uh, I'm not even just going to say Infamous 4 I'm going to say why didn't they just remake or remaster Infamous 1 and 2 and put that as a bundle and re-release it for like $70 That actually sounds like a really good idea in in my mind because I would actually 100% totally buy that. That's two games that you're buying that have hours of playtime that you could spend on for two incredible games at $70 and if it's a first party title. And if they really wanted to, they could not only just release it on the PlayStation 5, they could also release it on PC and it would do extremely well there because that just introduces an entire modding scene that could go on to Infamous 1 and 2 and make the games even better and that would get more people to want to play the game even more. Uh, they could have made a new Sly Cooper game or bring back the Sly Cooper trilogy and bring those games onto modern hardware and get people interested into the Sly Cooper franchise again. They could have made, I'm, inter I'm actually very interested in this one which is a Days Gone 2. I love the first game, Days Gone game. It got very mediocre reviews when it first came out but when I played it I actually genuinely really, really enjoyed it. I loved Sam Whitworth's character as Deacon St. John. I think he's an amazing character with a super fun gameplay loop that just really gripped me. And I really enjoyed that game. And if Sony had spent the money that they spent on Concord for another Days Gone, that would have been amazing. For people who love Little Big Planet, they could have made another Little Big Planet. Resistance, we haven't seen a new Resistance game in forever. I think we only have Resistance 1 and 2. I don't think we ever got a third game from the Resistance franchise. Point being, there were so many opportunities that they could have used to make new games for the franchises that already exist, but instead of doing that, they spent the money that they had and used it for Concord, which just is hilarious, obviously, in retrospect. But that also brought me to a tweet that I saw revolving around Twisted Metal, I forget where I saw it exactly, but it brought my mind back to Twisted Metal and also around the TV show. And apparently back in February this year, they, along with a bunch of Sony layoffs, they canceled a Twisted Metal live service game that was being developed by a UK-based studio, Firespray, which is absolutely insane to me because they came out with the Twisted Metal TV show and the most perfect opportunity that could have happened was because of the TV show, they could have made an entirely brand new game, brought in this whole new audience, bring back their already existing audience for Twisted Metal, and potentially had an extremely successful game that could have stand all on its own, and it's an existing IP that Sony just simply isn't using, but instead of using their money and resources to make a new Twisted Metal game, they instead used it on Concord, which didn't even last two weeks and is getting shut down. My point being, and to wrap things up, I also want to mention one last thing before we wrap things up, actually. It's so funny in comparison when you see tweets comparing the player counts for Concord to something like Gollum, which came out last year, and it doesn't even compare with the player numbers that they reached at their peak. Obviously, Gollum is an awful, atrocious fucking game that should never, ever, ever, ever have released, but it at least had more players playing at one time than Concord did in the entire two weeks that it released. But if you don't wanna compare it to a game that came out last year in 2023, let's compare it to a game that came out in the year 1998. And the game that I'm talking about is Half-Life, Half-Life 1. It came out on November 19th, 1998, and at its peak, it had 33,000 players. And right now, when I'm currently looking at it, I'm actually gonna refresh the page as I'm looking at it. 
Uh, currently, right now, the concurrent amount of players that it has right now, at this very moment of me recording this, it has 578 players. Concord currently has, I'm actually going to refresh the page as well, 42 players, with its peak being at 697. More people are willing to play a game that came out in 1998, and people aren't willing to give Concord a chance. And it's just simply because it's not fun to play, it's boring, the character designs are awful, and it wants to push an agenda more than anything else. It doesn't. It didn't want to be an insanely fun game to play. It wanted to push identity politics. And as we've learned in recent years, people don't want games that push an agenda. They don't want games that push identity politics. Because at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. And I saw a video from someone from an entirely different studio. And I like what he mentioned. And it's that identity politics themselves aren't necessarily bad. You know, trying to push you know, I, like gen gender identity, such as like what you sexually identify as, in itself is not bad. But what is bad is when you try to force that on players who don't want that in their games. And it doesn't necessarily make a game bad, but it will already make a game that is bad even worse. So yeah, to wrap things up, this is a case study of what not to do with a franchise or what not to do with a game and what not to do in general when you're making a new franchise so hopefully sony learns from this they have to learn from this because there's no way that they're going to see that this happened and they don't learn from their mistakes I, there's no way that this is going to end up repeating itself i could be wrong there's always a chance that something like that is going to happen again but i think it's insanely unlikely i think sony doesn't want to lose another 200 million dollars uh, on something like this so yeah that's pretty much it that's it for me with with the concord situation i've been Keeping my eyes on it every now and then, kind of making fun of the game every now and then with my friends on Discord. Uh, and then when it got released with this news and information, just I just couldn't believe it. I, I genuinely could not believe that this happened. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say about the entire situation revolving around Concord. It sucks. I feel bad for the devs who genuinely did care about this game and did want this game to succeed and be really, really good. But... It just didn't pan out that way, and that's unfortunate. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more, please be sure to subscribe. Turn on bell notifications so you don't miss another video. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.